What if I told you that a single sheep brought us closer to a real life Jurassic Park than mosquitoes frozen in amber ever did? The two are more closely related than you think, and it's all thanks to cloning. In 1996, scientists created Dolly the sheep, a healthy clone born using the cells of other sheep. But since Dolly, Colony hasn't really come back into the spotlight. Despite this, scientists have been hard at work trying to resurrect extinct species like woolly mammoths and even dinosaurs. Today, we're gonna break down how this tech works, how long it'll take before we can bring back prehistoric beasts, and whether it's possible to clone ourselves. So, what does the future of cloning look like? Okay, so it's a little complicated. There isn't just one type of cloning. There are actually three different types. Gene cloning, therapeutic cloning, and reproductive cloning. Gene cloning, unfortunately, doesn't reproduce an animal. Boo! Then there's therapeutic cloning, which can eventually help human beings, and its process is used in reproductive cloning, so we should elaborate a little bit. Scientists replace the nucleus of an egg cell with materials found inside the nucleus of a somatic cell taken from a patient. I know, I know, there are a lot of cells, but a somatic cell is any cell that isn't a reproductive cell. The egg cell is then stimulated to divide. Almost a week later, the cell is harvested for new stem cells during the division process. And since these cells were taken from the original patient, they're automatically a genetic match. So their body gladly accepts them. Therapeutic cloning uses a process known as SCNT, or somatic cell nuclear transfer, a process that led to the eventual cloning of Dolly the sheep. This leads us to my favorite kind of cloning, reproductive cloning. Reproductive cloning is the process by which scientists clone animals. Just like in therapeutic cloning, a somatic cell's DNA is implanted into an egg cell without a nucleus. After the egg is stimulated, it develops into an early stage embryo inside of a test tube. Then it's implanted into an adult female's womb. This embryo then develops into a baby, which is born a clone of the animal that the somatic cell was taken from. This process gave us the world's most famous sheep all the way back in 1996. Dolly the sheep was the first successfully cloned mammal, but she technically wasn't the first animal to be cloned. Scientists had cloned a tadpole back in 1952 using a version of nuclear transfer. However, these tadpoles suffered abnormal growth due to the fact that the embryos used were in the later stages of development, which was kind of a big deal. To give you a scope of how rare a successful clone is, let's take a look at the numbers. It took 277 tries for scientists to create an embryo that would successfully grow into a baby sheep. This process was also the first to be successful using an adult somatic cell. Scientists actually never thought this could be possible, so it was a huge deal. Dolly lived a relatively long life, giving birth to six lambs before eventually dying from lung cancer in 2003 only six years old. And since Dolly, scientists have cloned all kinds of animals, cows, rabbits, horses, and even monkeys. Reproductive cloning has become more refined as the years have passed, to the point where special labs offer cloning services for pets. Barbara Streisand famously cloned her dead dog, Samantha, in 2017 using cells collected from her mouth and stomach. And if you have a cool $50,000 just burning a hole in your pocket, you can clone your pet too. And it only takes about 121 days, so something to mull around in your head. I don't know. The ability to clone pets is impressive, but scientists want to do more with it. In 2009, a team at the Center for Agronutrition Research and Technology in Spain, that's a mouthful, cloned a Pyrenean ibex, an animal that was pronounced extinct just nine years earlier. Unfortunately, the newborn ibex died of respiratory failure minutes after it's born due to abnormalities in its lungs. Golf clap for the little guy. The only one to make it out after 208 attempts. But you know what? What about the prehistoric creatures? Get to the good <laughs> Well, besides the Pyrenean ibex, cloning extinct animals, especially from prehistoric eras, seemed out of reach. An impossibility due to lack of DNA left behind by these ancient beasts. But just last year, in April 2018, Harvard scientists revealed how close they were to cloning woolly mammoths. Well, woolly mammoth elephant hybrids. Mammophants. That's what they're calling them. Mammophants. Scientists finally have access to their DNA thanks to a mammoth that was found frozen in Siberian ice. 
The traits that are responsible for mammoths' abilities to survive in extreme cold were found held in the genes of their DNA, which scientists have been able to splice into elephant DNA. Long, shaggy hair, cold-resistant blood, and small ears are all trying to be replicated in an entirely new animal within the womb of a present-day elephant. The team at Harvard already plans to insert the mammoth DNA into Asian elephant embryos by 2020, so we could be a year away from seeing a real-life mammoth ant. Okay, mammoths are cool, but when the hell am I gonna be able to ride a T-Rex to work? Unfortunately, we're not as close as we'd like to be. The movie Jurassic Park explains how scientists cloned dinosaurs by extracting the DNA from blood that mosquitoes trapped in amber were carrying. Sounds like everything you need to clone them, right? Well, unfortunately, this is only fiction. DNA cells inside of mosquitoes are destroyed during the fossilization process because their soft organic tissue is hardened. This makes it almost impossible to retrieve those cells. But notably, dinosaur bones with soft enough tissue have been discovered, meaning DNA could have survived this process. It hasn't been extracted yet, but it means that we might not be completely shut out from dinosaur DNA in the future. Now, theoretically, it could be possible to sequence the DNA of a dinosaur in order to replicate it. The problem is dinosaur genomes are incomplete. We just don't have enough information to create the DNA sequence from scratch. It literally took us 13 years to sequence the human genome, and we are notably not extinct. Speaking of humans, let's talk about when we can expect that. I hate to burst your bubble, but probably no time soon. Ethical concerns aside, we haven't developed a surefire way to clone human embryos. This is all thanks to a special protein in human and primate eggs called spindle proteins, which are responsible for cell division. Spindle proteins are found in a number of places within other animals as well. In humans, however, spindle proteins are located dangerously close to the chromosomes inside the egg. In order to clone a human, you need to remove the egg's nucleus, then replace it with a donor nucleus. But because the spindle proteins are positioned near the nucleus, they get removed as well, making it impossible for the cell to divide and form an embryo. So, unfortunately, it'll be a long time before you can clone yourself, send it to school, and play video games at home all day. Personally, I'd love to see a dinosaur walking around in my lifetime, but there are five whole movies that basically give us a reason not to do that. <laughs> Scientists, government officials, and the general public still have a lot of ethical questions to answer before we decide whether we're gonna clone dinosaurs or people. Answers I frankly don't have. I'm just a host for a mildly entertaining tech show. But we'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching Contextual. If you liked this episode, please make sure to leave a comment below and tell us what you liked about it. And if you have ideas for new episodes for next season, let us know in the comments as well. We have new episodes coming out every Thursday, so if you want to keep track of all the new episodes coming out, please like and subscribe to our page. And as always, have a great day.